Hey, welcome back. I'm Tatiana, and today I'm going to share with you eight things that you want to do and that you should be aware of before you start selling on Amazon. So let's jump into number one, which is checking to see if your country is listed as an accepted country to sell on Amazon. This might seem really obvious to you, but unfortunately many people don't check this ahead of time and all of this information is public. I'll link it in the description box for you down below um, so you can have the direct link to see exactly which countries are accepted and which are not. Countries such as Israel, Lebanon, Pakistan, North Korea, these countries are not accepted to register. And so if you're from that country and you want to start an Amazon FBA business, just know that there are going to be more barriers for you. There are ways around this, like setting up a company in another country, setting up a bank account in another country, but it's these extra steps that might take more time and more money. So knowing this ahead of time is important. It can save you a lot of money, and then you can make an educated decision whether or not you want to pursue this business. Number two is to know the necessary paperwork that Amazon's going to require from you. So that means things such as your business name or your personal name, your tax ID, your social security number, a valid credit card because Amazon is going to need a valid credit card, not a Visa debit card, a real credit card that is chargeable internationally because they're going to need to be able to charge you for your seller account and also for any fees that you might encounter such as you know ads and different things like that. So you need to have a credit card in order to register your account. So number three is to figure out whether or not the products you want to sell are in a restricted category. So if you already have an idea of what you want to sell, figure out, okay, what category would this fall into on the Amazon platform and is that category restricted or not? So there are many reasons why Amazon might restrict a category to sellers and Mostly it's because of quality. They want to make sure that the sellers are not new sellers. They want people who have established brands, who have proven records. They don't want garbage sold on there. There are a lot of liability risks. For example, in the food category, if you've never sold any food items before, you have no invoices from manufacturers, you're sourcing from overseas, you might not get approved to sell in the food category. If you have a store and you've been selling for the last five years locally in the marketplace of which you want to sell in, and you can prove that by sharing with Amazon an invoice or several invoices from your store and from your manufacturer who is local, then you would probably get approved to sell in that category. So just know that if the products that you want to sell are in a restricted category, it's going to require more effort on your part to prove yourself, and there's no guarantees that you will gain access to this category. So number four is to think about what business model do you want to go by. Do you want to do drop shipping or do you want to do private labeling? So I've got other videos that go more in depth on this topic because there's a lot to discuss and to help you make that decision. But to summarize, you know, there are benefits to drop shipping because you might not have to start with as much money. You know, you could have like $500 worth um, of initial investment versus private labeling might be more expensive. But with drop shipping, you're a little bit more limited in terms of building a brand and really scaling your business. So decide on that, do your research, do your homework, drop shipping or private labeling because that's going to impact how you build your brand and your seller registration. Number five is to really think about what is your vision? Why are you starting this business? Okay, so this is really important because this is what you're going to look back on and reference later down the road when you're making decisions, when you're deciding whether or not you want to accept an offer or decline it, whether or not you want to accept a collaboration or not, because you're gonna be able to look back and think about, okay, why did I start this business in the beginning? What was my vision? And is this offer in line with my values and my goals? So what I mean by that, is if right now you're thinking, okay, I wanna start this business to you know, basically pay my bills and I'm satisfied. I wanna make a couple thousand dollars a month, maybe a hundred grand a year, and I'm happy with that. I don't care to scale it. I don't care to grow a really huge company. That's not for me. Then that's good, get clear on that. Because whether you decide to build a business on Amazon that makes you a hundred thousand dollars a year versus 
millions of dollars every year, the amount of work that you're gonna have to put in is significantly different, right? To grow a business and to scale a business to millions of dollars each year, you're going to require a lot more of your time, a lot more of your money, you're gonna to have to build out a team, you're going to have to learn a lot more, you're gonna to have to grow and develop and collaborate. There's gonna be a lot more effort required, right? Versus you can build this business just to support you, to maybe make enough money so that you can quit your job and you can stay home with your family. But know what it is that you want. Get clear on that right now before you start the business. Because what happens, and this is my experience, is that after you start this business, you're like, you can start to become greedy. And you can start to see, wow, this is so awesome. I have so many opportunities. It can grow so fast. My potential is limitless. Let's just keep saying yes. Yes to this, yes to this, yes to this. And pretty soon, you know, when your initial idea was just to have a small company to support your lifestyle and, you know, contribute to your family, that grows into something a lot bigger that now takes up a lot more of your time, you know, time that you originally started the business so that you could have more time to spend with your family, but now you're spending more time working on the business because you've um, said yes to all of these new responsibilities. Building out a team where you have to make sure that you have things to, to give your employees. You need to make sure that they're working and not just not doing anything if you're paying them. And so know what it is that you want. Get clear on your vision because this is what's going to help make your decisions a lot easier when you are in conflict, when you're not sure what to say yes to, what to say no to, when you're not sure what to do, you can think back on what was the original plan and why was that my plan? Why did I want to start this business in the first place? So I think your vision is very important. So always be clear on that and reference back to it as often as possible. And yes, your vision can change, absolutely. That's totally up to you. My vision has expanded as I've grown, but without a doubt, looking back at the reasons why I originally started a business online, you know, knowing that you know, I wanted a business that would support my travel, support me having fun, doing what I wanna do, when I wanna do it, that's important for me because oftentimes I can get sucked into this Let's grow, 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 grow. And then I kind of lose sight of what the original plan was. Okay, so number six is marketing. So have an idea, you don't need to know everything. You might not know anything about marketing right now and that's fine guys, like that's the cool thing about this is that if you don't know what marketing is or how to market, you don't have to because you learn it. You know, I never knew how to do email marketing. I never ha knew how to do social media marketing, but you have to be willing to learn. And if you're not willing to learn, then you can't expect to succeed. You have to be willing to put in the work to earn the success. So with marketing, have an idea of, you know, where do you want to market? You know, for example, if you already have an Instagram account and you're really good at Instagram, you've got followers, you like taking, creating content, you're very artistic, then maybe that's a platform that you would excel in in marketing your Amazon product. So knowing that ahead of time helps you decide on what product you want to sell. So if you know that you want to market the product on Instagram, say for example, you have a fitness Instagram, you're a fitness influencer, you've got 20,000 followers on Instagram, you post your workouts and all of that. So then that means that it would make sense for you to source a product in the fitness category because the people who already follow you would probably be interested in buying your product and you could create really creative content around that product and it would be very easy for you to market versus if you know, you're know you in that industry and you decide to source a barbecue brush, then you know your followers are gonna be like, what the heck, Like this does not interest me, I'm not gonna buy this. So that's really important. So like for example, you know, if you're gonna be marketing on Facebook or Instagram, you're gonna to wanna to have more of an exciting product. When people are scrolling, it kind of stops them in their tracks and it gets their attention. If you're really good with videos, you know, some people are really great at editing videos, creating really cool content, then you want a product that could be um, demonstrable and so that people can actually use it and see how it works in video, because video is very powerful. So certain products that are maybe more boring might not appeal to you if you're interested in doing social media marketing. But products that are boring oftentimes are in categories that have less competition. 
because now there are a lot of Amazon sellers like you and I, and they look for all of these cool products that they can market on social media. And so the boring ones sometimes get left behind, so those can be good opportunities. But just know that those ones may not be the best ones that will convert as well on social media, but they could do really well with Amazon pay-per-click ads. So having an idea about what you're gonna do with your marketing is going to help you when deciding on your product. Okay, number seven is to think about and look and do your research to see what your competitors are doing. So I would say most people go into this business with an idea of something that they wanna sell and probably 90% of the time they don't actually end up selling their original idea with good reason, but my advice to you is when you do have an idea of what you want to sell is to go and see what your competitors are doing because that's going to give you an idea of what's going to be required of you. So you might be thinking, okay, like this is the product I want to do. What's next? Like how do I market it? How do I, you know, share it with people? How do I create a good sales page? Well, you just have to look at your competitors. Look at the ones who are already doing really well they've paved the path for you and research them you know subscribe to their email list see what emails they're sending people check their website out daily check out their social media pages see what they're doing to capture customers see what they're doing to convert customers see how their price fluctuates just do your research because that is the best way for you to know okay what is going to be expected of you in order to remain re relevant and competitive because maybe you might find like oh no like they are doing way more than I can do at this time they're investing way more money than I can invest in order to compete with them or you might say like, oh awesome, Like I could totally do this and, and do it way better than them. So just to get yourself an idea, do that. And the last tip for you is to invest in a training program. Now, this is the question I get asked all the time is how do I get started? Well, the best way to get started is with a step-by-step -step comprehensive training program. Because what are you gonna do when you get stuck? What are you going to do when you're not sure what to do, when to do? What are you going to do when you have questions and no one to answer them for you? So a training program is your best bet. I strongly encourage that you look into different programs, do your research, do your homework, find a program that resonates with you. You know, training programs can range anywhere from $500 to $5,000, depending on the quality of the program. From my experience, you do get what you pay for when it comes to these Amazon training programs. I've been through many of them, and I recently just made a post on Instagram asking my followers, hey, what programs have you been through? Because I wanna make sure I go through all of them so that when I recommend a program to you, it's a quality program and a program that a lot of people have a lot of success with. So I just encourage you to do your own research because I do not recommend that you do this on your own. Although I try and provide you with a lot of information on this YouTube channel about Amazon FBA and there are other YouTube channels who are great as well, it's just not enough. Because if you wanna have someone hold your hand and tell you what to do step by step, you either have to invest in some sort of mentor who, you know, it's just not as guaranteed as a training program where tens of thousands of students have already been through that program and each year it gets better and better and updated. And it's information that you can really rely on. So this is definitely the way that I would recommend going about starting this Amazon FBA business. Um, and if you want uh, my recommendations, I'll link two courses in the description box below for you. Both courses I have been through personally. I've vetted them and they're just amazing programs. And if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Eight things to think about before you start your Amazon FBA business. I hope that you enjoyed it and check out my next video for for more Amazon FBA tutorials. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you've already subscribed, there's this little gray bell symbol. If you hit that, then you're gonna get notified when I release new videos. And if you wanna keep watching, I've handpicked these two videos for you to watch right here.